The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has reached another important milestone on its journey to revolutionize astronomy. The instrument on board that needs to be the coldest has finally reached its operating temperature, a chilly 7 Kelvin. Let's take a look at what this instrument will do and why it needs to be so cold. Webb will be observing the universe using infrared light, which is a longer wavelength and lower energy than the visible light that our eyes can see. The reason that JWST and its instruments need to be super cold is because infrared light is given off by warm objects, so any heat coming off the detectors and the telescope itself will cause noise and interfering signals while Webb is trying to look at the universe. You can just remember that the longer the wavelength of light you're looking at, the cooler your instrument should be. So since infrared light is pretty long, Webb needs to be pretty cold. Some of the objects that Webb will look at will be incredibly faint, so eliminating absolutely any possible source of interfering signal is absolutely essential. There are actually four detectors on board Webb, and while they all need to be pretty cold, and by that I mean at least below 50 Kelvin, and ideally around 37 Kelvin, MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument, needs to be the coldest. MIRI has both a camera and a spectrograph on board that can analyze light, and it's sensitive to wavelengths between 5 and 28 microns. Its operating temperature is just 7 Kelvin, which is minus 447 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 266 degrees Celsius. And as of mid-April 2022, that temperature has been reached. If you want a comparison for the Kelvin scale, a domestic freezer is about 255 Kelvin. If you want to see the history and progress of the temperature of each part of Webb, there are plots on the NASA website, but I think I prefer these plots from Geo Paglia on Twitter. They look so good. If you're wondering why it cooled down so slowly, it's partly because they want to carefully manage this difficult process. But also, the cryo cooler wasn't even turned on until after the alignment of the primary mirror was finished. This was to reduce vibrations coming from the cooler during that alignment process, which would have made it even more difficult. Now that alignment is finished, the cooler is online and things are very cold on web. Just as a reminder, zero Kelvin is the theoretical coldest temperature that any matter can reach and all motion, including that of atoms and individual particles, should stop at this temperature. At below 7 Kelvin, Miri will be the coldest camera in space that we know of. How do you even get something down to such a cold temperature? Well, space itself is pretty cold, as long as you aren't in direct sunlight. And thanks to Webb's sun shields, all of the detectors are in the shade and feeling the cool vacuum of space. That gets the instruments down to around 90 Kelvin, which is about minus 138 Celsius. But to get even colder, we needed the help of an electrically powered cryo cooler. This cryo cooler is solar powered and it pumps liquid helium around the instruments to keep them super cold. The final stage of the cooling was most difficult, with the team calling the cooling from 15 to 6.4 Kelvin a pinch point of the whole commissioning process. Beyond reducing the infrared radiation from the telescope itself, cooling below 7 Kelvin provides another benefit, reducing something called dark current. This mystical sounding current is actually caused by the very atoms that make up the detectors vibrating and causing those detectors to think they're seeing light when they aren't. It's a source of noise in the images that we want to minimize. And it's actually also an effect that cameras on Earth have to deal with as well. I like to think of it like this. Electric current is basically just electrons moving around a circuit or across a material. As ever, this is a bit of a simplification, but for this explanation, I think it's fine. When photons hit a detector on the telescope, this imparts energy and excites the material of the detector, causing the electrons to flow with more energy. And so the detector sees a current and a charge and counts that as seeing light. However, even when absolutely no light is hitting the detector, electrons aren't perfectly still. This means that even without light from an external source, electrons might randomly move in the detector, providing a small current and making the detector think it saw some light, effectively giving a false signal in the telescope. Dark current is often expressed in electrons per pixel per second. And again, since Webb is looking at very faint objects in space, we want to reduce any source of noise, including this dark current. It is a very small effect, but even this can be important when you're dealing with machinery as sensitive as that on board web. Temperature is basically just a measurement of how much electrons and atoms are moving and vibrating in the material. The colder the material is, the less they're moving. This means that reducing the temperature of web reduces the movement of its atoms, and hence it reduces the dark current in the detectors. I actually hadn't heard of dark current before learning about JWST's commissioning process, and I think it's a pretty cool, if pretty annoying process. I also think it's one of the better named dark things in astronomy and cosmology. 
We're often talking about dark matter and dark energy, but these are bad names. Dark matter is a hypothetical matter that we think exists in the universe, but it doesn't reflect or emit any light in any way. This means that really it's transparent matter rather than dark matter. Dark energy is a mysterious something causing the current expansion of the universe to accelerate. In that case, the dark in its name means we have no idea what this is, energy. However, for dark current, it's current despite no external light being involved. And I think dark is a pretty good description of that. MIRI, in particular, detects a longer infrared wavelength than the other detectors on board web. And this makes it more susceptible to the impact of dark current. And it means that it needs to be colder than the other instruments. For MIRI, the dark current goes up by a factor of 10 for every single degree warmer that the instrument is. So now that everything is nice and cold, what's next for Webb? Once MIRI hit the 6.4 Kelvin it is now, the team operating it began a series of checks to make sure that everything's working as it should. And so far, everything looks absolutely perfect. Next, it'll be time for the important step of removing the lens cap. We mustn't forget that one. And then it's time to take some test images of known objects in space that can be used for calibration and to perfect the MIRI instrument setup. Once that's all done for MIRI and the other detectors on board, this will be around 180 days after the launch of Webb. And then it's time to start the science operations that we're all excitedly waiting for. This includes observing the first galaxies in the universe, the light from which is now infrared light because it's been stretched from shorter wavelengths by the expansion of the universe and also the early stages of star and planet formation in dusty and gassy regions of space. Again, these are much easier to see using IR light than visible or more high energy light. Leave a comment down below to tell me what you're most excited about with Web, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.